Welcome to this week's OK at Work with myself, Sarah Sawyer, and my colleague, Russell Berger, both attorneys at Offit Kerman. And today we are talking about workplace investigations, uh, mainly just when to have a workplace investigation, when to get others involved, and what do you do once you've completed one? So what's a good place to start when employers are thinking about workplace investigations, Russell? Yeah, so I mean, oftentimes it starts with a complaint. Uh, or an observation of a behavior that should lead to a complaint if you're, you know, if it's the manager, the owner uh, uh, identifying the behavior. So something is wrong. Something, someone's identifying it. Someone's complaining about it. Uh, someone's seeing it, and it's, you know, potentially in violation of uh, not just the law, but you know, your employment policies. So, you know, this may be discriminatory. I don't know yet. Or if, if what is said is true, it's definitely discriminatory or harassment, and I'm going to have to deal with it. Um, but really, you know, I, I tend to think of at least like, you know, like a funnel. It, it's open at the top. And if things are coming in and there's complaints and there's issues, I mean, you've got an obligation to investigate. You've got an obligation to not retaliate against someone who's making a complaint. Um, so you want to take everything seriously. I know for a while, and it may still be the case that like the number one uh, category for charges of discrimination was retaliation. And that happens because for whatever the underlying claim may be, uh, businesses wouldn't take or didn't take it seriously um, and didn't address the complaint um, in a, you know, mostly confidential, serious manner. And as a result, you know, the employee felt retaliated against. So, you know, really, you know, when in doubt, I think it's smart to, uh, conduct an investigation, but, you know, as you mentioned, Sarah, like there's different versions of investigations and there's times where you keep it internal, you want to use external, maybe you want to use a consultant, maybe you want to use a lawyer and keep it privileged. You know, there's a lot of um, additional considerations once you get to that decision. Yeah, and as far as making that decision about how you're going to conduct the investigation, obviously, if you have policies in place, you want to take a look at those and see how you've done things in the past and what you know, your standard practice is, what the, you know, whether you have any policies in place and whether you should have any, because some organizations end up having a ton of these if you have a large workforce versus um, a smaller workforce where maybe it's not happening quite as frequently. So there, yeah, that, that could be a difference as well. Um, but you want to kind of consider what are the factors, what's the nature of the complaint, how many people are involved, how widespread is it, what, what the, when you're looking at who's going to be involved and whether you're going to involve a third party or someone external. A lot of times involving a third party investigator or someone external is a good idea because they're objective, right? They come in, um, they can interview people, they can come in in a different way than uh someone who's internal to the organization, especially on a smaller organization where maybe the person who would normally be asking the questions is implicated in some way or might need to be interviewed as part of the investigation. Then the next thing is once you've figured out how to do it, well, now what do you do with the results of the investigation? Um, you know, doing the investigation itself is, is not enough. Uh, you've got to then look at, well, what came of the investigation? And a lot of times with these investigations, you'll find that there's, a ton of stuff in there that wasn't even the nature of the original complaint, right? So you find out a bunch of other things you weren't expecting to find out or that don't track with what you were originally looking for. Because once you start getting people talking about things, other things might come from it. So there's a lot to it. I think we could do a, probably a, a whole uh, 30 minutes on this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's for sure. So, so you go through the investigation, like you say. I, I think you know sometimes you pop the hood, you, you learn a lot about your organization, even though it was right in front of you um, that you hadn't really been paying attention to. Um, so maybe there's some other action items just in general from a policies and practices standpoint. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, if you have a discrete conflict that or a discrete issue that's being investigated, you get an investigation. Like there's there's some next steps. And, you know, those can range, um, you know, depending on the conduct, depending on, um, you know, the severity, the pervasiveness of it, the, you know, the issues involved. Um, you know, sometimes it's, well, you know, we don't, we can't really tell what's going on, but we think, you know, training is a good thing. So we're going to do some extra training just to be on the safe side to, you know, this is egregious behavior. We have to terminate this person. Sometimes you suspend someone before you, uh, 
while the investigation is pending because there's problems or sometimes you reassign work order, you know, workflow because you want to avoid problems while you're investigating. Um, and so sometimes those things become permanent uh, after an investigation. So, I mean, there's a lot of different, the full range of options that you may implement after an investigation. But the important thing is, you know, like anything, like the investigation's there to identify what the problem is and what really the issues are. And then you need to take steps to remedy that issue. Um, because if you let it faster, it's going to get worse. It's going to be a bigger problem. So it's identify and address at a high level is really what you're trying to accomplish here. Yeah, be really thoughtful in your approach, you know, because there's a lot of ways that these things can go wrong. You alluded it to it with the retaliation piece. Um, so really need to be thoughtful. You don't want to cause, you know, additional harm if harm's been caused. So um, just like anything we talk about, this is one that in particular, you really want to have a lot of sensitivity around and be really thoughtful in your approach. So, well, thanks, Russell. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Sarah.